When we take a look at assets and liabilities, we need to be aware of the fact that we split them in the statement of financial position between current and non-current. So we need to know what makes an asset current, what makes an asset non-current. We know the definition of an asset. We know that we've got to be aware of whether or not this is a resource that's controlled by the entity. Remember, just because uh, your entity doesn't own something outright, doesn't necessarily mean that they don't control it. So a resource controlled by the entity, we always ask ourselves, what is the past event that gave rise to this? Did you buy the thing? Did someone hand it over to you? Someone give it to you? Whatever. What is the past event? And we also know that there's going to be uh, future economic benefit. And we normally consider that, and we normally think about that in terms of money, right? Money is future economic benefit. If we think we're going to get money in the future, then that is economic benefit. Economic, for us, we kind of we kind of translate to anything that has to do with money. Whether that is money coming in or it's going to save me money, that is an economic benefit as well. And um, that means we're hoping that the future economic benefit will flow into my company, will flow in, and it can be reliably measured. So this is the definition of assets that we are aware of. And if you took a look at my little infographic, we can take a look, you break them down and go through them. So when we look at our assets and our current and our non-current, what is the difference and how do we need to split that? So we're still asking ourselves all these questions and we believe that, yes, it does meet all that criteria. But now the statement of financial position says, no, that's not enough. The reason it's not enough is because it doesn't tell you when you're going to realize this economic benefit. Now, imagine this. You go to the bank and you say, I'd like a loan, please. And they say to you, well, tell me what your financial position is. So you say, well, we have this many assets and I have this many liabilities. And uh, you say, well, actually, if we take a look at my assets, my assets are worth 100,000 Rand and my liabilities are only worth 80,000 Rand. Okay? The bank says that's fantastic. It means that the owner's share, your equity or your net asset value is 20,000 Rand, which means this is a good thing. I'll give you a loan because it looks like you're doing well. But what if the bank knew that this particular asset wasn't expected to bring you any economic benefit for two years? Okay, So you had a long-term investment, for example, and that investment was only going to realize, was only actually going to come to you in two years' time, whereas the 80,000 Rand liability was actually due in one month creates a little bit of a problem. So you can imagine when we're talking about the statement of financial position, not only is it important to identify what you own, what you owe and your owner's portion of the business, it's also important to realize that there's a time factor in this as well. Just because your assets are higher than your liabilities doesn't necessarily mean that everything's fantastic. If your assets are only going to realize in two years' time and your liabilities have to be paid now, you're in trouble because in a month's time, you've got to find 80,000 Rand and your long-term investment's only coming to you in two years. So for this reason, we break down our assets and our liabilities between current and non-current. And when we're dealing with accounting, our current and our non-current, we always talk about as 12 months. So 12 months is our financial year. And anything that is going to realize in the next 12 months is considered current. And anything that's going to be recognized in longer than 12 months is your non-current. If we take a look at the types of assets that we deal with more often in FSC 1502, you have your machinery, your PPE, your plant, your property, your equipment. You bought a factory so that you could manufacture your items. You bought machinery so you could manufacture items. You bought vehicles and delivery vehicles so that you could deliver all your goods. Those are all long term and they are expected to bring you economic benefits. They're expected to realize and bring you economic benefits for more than 12 months. Your property, you bought that factory. That factory is not going to be useful to you for just 12 months. It's going to be useful to you for longer than 12 months. Therefore, your machinery, your property, plants and equipment would be considered non-current because those benefits are going to come to you for more than 12 months. Inventory, we're really hoping that you don't take more than 12 months to realize or to sell your inventory. So that's generally considered 
current. We always talk about inventory as current because I really hope you are able to sell your inventory within 12 months. Otherwise, it's probably not inventory. Your debt is people that owe you money. Again, we really hope that this is actually going to be sitting in current, that they're going to pay you within the next 12 months. If your debtors are not paying you in 12 months, then you shouldn't have them. So your debtors are going to be current. You're going to be getting the money from them. Cash is instant, which means anything that you have cash, cash in bank, your petty cash, cash float, anything you have on hand is instant. You realize it instantly. You get the benefit from that instantly, which means that it is current. So when you look at your assets, we consider current versus non-current. And the difference is things that are going to be realized within 12 months or things that are going to be realized beyond 12 months. And when we ask ourselves the realization, what is the realized? We're talking about how long and when you're going to get the economic benefits for this. Exactly the same thing applies when we look at the liabilities, except obviously we're now asking ourselves, when are you going to have to settle this? When are you going to have to pay all of this off? Again, we look at current versus non-current. We break it down between 12 months. If it's in 12 months, less than 12 months, or longer than 12 months is going to be our non-current. Our more common liabilities, we look at mortgages or bonds with the bank. If you take out a mortgage on your property, there's no way they expect you to pay that off within a year. You have 12 months more. You generally have 20, 25 years to pay that off, which means that that will be non-current. It will take longer than 12 months to settle that liability. Long-term loans, again, another word for non-current is long-term. So you will hear people talking about long-term. You will hear talking about people talking about non-current. You'll also hear people talking about fixed. These are all the same thing. Non-current, fixed versus long-term, it's all exactly the same thing. So a non-current liability, um, a non-current um, Non-current assets, the same as saying fixed asset is the same as saying fixed liability. So your long-term loan, also non-current. And your creditors, these are your trade creditors. You buy stuff from them, you buy goods from them, you make something else, you sell it. They want their money definitely within 12 months, and this is going to be your current. Now, when you go and give your financial information to the bank, you can see that they're not just going to take a look at your assets and your liabilities. They're going to take a look at your current assets and your non-current assets. They're going to take a look at your current liabilities and your non-current liabilities. And instead of just looking whether or not that is higher than that, they're going to be asking how is this broken up here. So it's very useful for us to break down the, the practicality of how this money is going to come in and when its money is going to come in and when it needs to leave the business.